This is Sri Lanka, a country visited by many tourists every year. A country known for its tea, beautiful train routes and lush landscapes. But it is also a country known for having had one of the most devastating civil wars in the world. The war lasted over 25 years and was waged between the majority Sinhalese government and rebels, who fought for a state for minority Tamils in the north of the country. The conflict killed over 100,000 people and roughly 20,000 people are still missing. I'm traveling with my colleague Malika and peace builder Visaka to Kilinochi in Jaffna to find out where are we now, nine years after the war has ended. I mean, this is uh, Kilinochi, the, the northern most town before Jaffna. And this is also very significant where the conflict is concerned. Uh, because this was um, during the peace talks, during the peace uh, process, uh, this was the headquarters um, of uh, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. So I'm talking about, I mean, personally, the, my, my second son went missing and he was missing in action from this town. my good friend, she heads uh, uh, the Women's Development Centre in Jaffna and have been working with women and also mainly for human rights for a very long time. These people, uh, uh, actually they came from uh, Halali area and uh, they have been living here nearly 29 years in this camp thinking that they can go back one day to their own uh, place. Just first posting was posted here in Kilinochi and he went missing. So it's um, from the uh, forward defense line and uh, his uh, headquarters were also in, in Kilinochi town, situated in Kilinochi town. In fact, uh, when we, he went missing, the first thing is wanted to know like what happened to him. That's how I gathered uh, the other uh, mothers, uh, wives, uh, you know, fathers, sisters, brothers of uh, the servicemen who were serving at that time and who went missing. 609 Sri Lankan military officers and soldiers went missing from the Kilnochi battle. And then, you know, very soon we came to know that unless otherwise this war is stopped, there will be many mothers, wives like us. And that's why I reached to uh, the other side of the divide, means uh, the families of the LTTE, Asking them, like, because we are in the same pain, let's come together to stop this war. Jaffna to meet Father Jacob. You're welcome. Martin and Malika. So a lot of like rehabilitation, relief work for people was done by the church and Father was heading that organization at that time. So that's how we came to know him. So one, one of the major problems uh, here at the moment is uh, one is the land problem. So these are all, see now, these are all people's land. People's houses are inside. So not, they are not allowed. See the houses, the houses are like this. Inside, yeah. plenty of houses are like this. This is precisely that we were telling. These are not, none of these are small places. No? These are all big houses. It's completely damaged. There's not even a stone. It was like this. It was like this. After the war, after the war, they purposely destroyed many churches, many temples. We were expecting uh, real changes in Sri Lanka, but unfortunately, things have not moved in the direction that we, wa we all wanted. Sri Lanka is in a post-war phase. Um, 
A lot of people confuse it, uh, saying it's post-conflict. Even though the war has ended, it doesn't mean conflict has necessarily ended. Social conflict still remains. Young people are not happy. The older generation is still not happy. There's no closure. There's no way for our communities as a whole to move forward from what happened. The socioeconomic inequities, also the political, civil and political, like, marginalization of uh, Tamil people, that has not been addressed. Uh, people are still living in camps. They're still living in camps. So it is very important that the government takes necessary steps to resettle the people in their own lands. So given the huge gap uh, in finding that political will and a government committed to uh, reform, there is a huge need for civil society to take that place. We came together, we cried together, the mom, family, you know, the mothers were exchanging photographs because they knew that, you know, each other's sons may be the perpetrator, but again, that's the only medium that we could find some uh, solutions. So that's why they came together. It was very easy to come together with them because we all had a similar goal. We all wanted to know what has happened and we all wanted this war to stop. And up to now, that's why we say we train the women to run for political office, not for anything else, because we want the women to be in peace negotiations. I mean, so our first and foremost uh, goal is peace in the world. Peace in our countries, peace in the world. So that's towards that we are working.